us talk about rooftop tents. We've had our setup for over two years and we've logged at least 100 nights in all types of weather, snow, rain, hail, wind, you name it. We are gonna go over what you should know about rooftop tents. First things first, let's talk about the cost. These things are not cheap. You have your ground tents, which can range from oh, 30, 200. These, 800 to 5,000. So there's definitely more expense to having a rooftop tent. Rooftop tents pricing is affected by the brand name. We paid $1,800 for this, and that of course was two years ago. So the price has definitely gone up, but a very similar product with a very recognized name, twice as much. I think they were actually around 5,000 we were looking at it, so quite a bit more. What it boils down to is a tent might be more expensive. That doesn't necessarily mean it comes with more stuff. Do your research, find the reviews, check them out, see what your needs are, and then go from there. Now that you've potentially spent thousands of dollars on a tent, you want to think about security. We watched a video on Reddit with a guy, he pulled up his a pickup truck in a parking structure, pulled out bolt cutters and snipped it right off and tossed the tent into the back of his truck. So security is definitely something to think of. Our rooftop tent is attached to our steel beam, but majority of them are attached to roof racks on vehicles. There are companies out there that make bolts and brackets that will help give you a little extra security so that your tent can't be stolen. Another thing you could do is throw in an Apple AirTag or some sort of tracker inside the mattress. In the event that it was stolen, you could track it down. Cool thing about rooftop tents is they are so easy to set up. Anywhere from one to five minutes, depending on the tent. Let's open ours up. We have a couple buckles on ours and open. There's one strap that holds it all down, so you unhook it on the sides. What this strap does, which a lot of tents have, is it holds everything in for when you're closing it down. We keep the poles for our awnings, or the window coverings right here, so it's easy to get to. We have a layer of Reflectix for an extra level of insulation. So once the strap is off, we're gonna grab the ladder and pull it out until it is extended. We're gonna flip it down, hold one here and one here, and pull it down. We're gonna pull the ladder out until the base is completely flat. So now we need to adjust the ladder. We start at the top. A lot of these tents have metal poles that we use for the rain flap and covers over the windows. The flexible pole goes right into the pre-drilled hole. Put it in the... Let's talk about space and how much actual sleeping space you have. Um, a lot of the times tents will exaggerate the amount of people gonna fit. Um, this particular tent, it says three to four people. We actually fit three comfortably in there. Let's check it out. Oh, and also remember, if you have to keep your bags inside the tent with you, that's gonna take up a lot more space, but let's go see it inside. When we are camping, we have three people up here with our two heads and then one head down at the bottom. When you have your sleeping bags in there, it takes up a lot of space, but the whole length of it, there is, my head's almost to the top, there is still some space down at the bottom for you where you could have bags. If you really want to figure out if you're going to fit in the tent, get the dimensions, tape it off on the ground and lay down and see if you're all going to fit. A key factor to remember when you have a rooftop tent is if you have to pee in the middle of the night, you got to climb down the ladder and the ladder is in the middle. So if you have somebody sleep in the middle, you're going to have to be pushing them off the side to get down. Depending on how high your vehicle is, it is a bit of a climb. The ladder, when it is set up, it is at an, each step is actually at an angle. So when you're stepping down on these steps, it digs into the bottom of your foot, which is why, we, of course, we keep our shoes handy and put them on when we're going down. There is a company out there that makes an insert to correct that, then hopefully, eventually, there'll be more options out there. There are two types of tents. There's the soft shell, which is a rooftop tent with a cover on it that has to be removed and there is the hard shell, which is what we have. It is part of the tent and stays on. This is the inside of the tent. This is the underside of the hard shell. It takes up the whole side. I feel that the, I have a little bit more protection with the hard shell, a little bit harder to get into to get me. We have found that the hard shell is quite aerodynamic going down that road, easy to clean and very durable. 
If you have pets, you need to make sure you take that into account because it is a little bit higher up. We have a very large dog and there was no way he was getting up that ladder, so one of us slept in a tent with him. But if it's a smaller dog, I can see you being able to manage carrying them up. We've seen people online make special ramps for their pets or have them go up on their hood and up through the window. Just figure out how it's gonna work best for you. Another thing to remember is if you're camping in the rain, this tent has two support systems on either side, but of course on this model, there's nothing supporting the middle. So when the rain is coming down and if it's super heavy, it's gonna be coming right down the middle, right down the ladder. You also want to think about where you're going to dry this tent out at. You need to have a space. You don't want to put this tent away wet. You want to be able to open it up, let it dry out. Unlike you know, a ground tent, you can just throw it over the shower curtain and let it dry out. This needs to be able to air out and dry out. When it is raining, you don't have to worry about it. The ground getting sopping wet, coming up through the bottom and getting all your sleeping bag and stuff wet. You're up off the ground, so as long as it doesn't come through the top, you're set. One thing to remember with regards to a rooftop tent is mobility. You get to camp, set up everything, and whoops, you forgot the beer. You've got to run to the store. That means you have to close everything back up and hit the road. If you're finding that you're going to be doing a lot of driving while you're camping, you might want to think about putting it on a trailer. We did the DIY trailer version. There are definitely companies out there that make some pretty amazing rooftop tent trailer builds. Unlike ground tents where you have to add an extra cushion or air mattress, the rooftop tents come with a mattress. We actually really like this one. We have not added any extra padding to it. But when you find the rooftop tent that you actually want, check out the reviews of the mattresses. You may find that you want to add an extra cushion to it. Some rooftop tents come with extra accessories. This one is um, a slider. It comes off and on. It actually could be used for like keys or phones, whatever your need is. Over here we have another one that is pretty large. It's got two big pockets and some open thoughts. So if something wet was in there, it could drip down. Be perfect for shoes. Most rooftop tents have some sort of external internal lighting system. Over here, we actually have one underneath on both sides of the tent. And one of the cool features about that is it changes colors as well. And then inside, of course, there is another set of lights. It does need an external power source. We use our Jackery for it, but it does, puts off a lot of light at camp. If you wanna learn more about this trailer build, check out our entire series here and we would love to hear from you. So let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. And if you wanna know more about us, check out exploretrekadventure.com and we'll see you next time.